Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week two of my ketamine treatment series. I call it a series. It's just going to be four videos of uh, me documenting what I'm experiencing during this treatment for about four weeks. So hopefully, if you're not getting anything from it, at least it's entertaining. I know it's not entertaining either because it's, uh, it's a boring topic. But it might be intriguing to some to see what happens because I'm sure there's some of you out there who are dealing with depression and anxiety and just wish you could get rid of it, but nothing is working. And that's what this is for. Ketamine is basically for resistant people who are resistant to treatment, and uh, that would be me. So anyway, I'm going to make some breakfast because it's 11.11, and that means I have 19 more minutes until... The two hour time restraint between my last meal and my treatments uh, fit. So, see you soon. Well, I have about six minutes left to, uh, to eat this. Let's see if I can do it. Well, my transportation is here. Time to go. Rex, I'll see you later. Churchill Square. Every time, before every session, there's paperwork to fill out. First dose is in each nostril. Now I just wait five minutes and I'll come back and do each nostril again. At least I got the Tic Tacs. Second dose done. Now to relax and enjoy some music. Blood pressure was good on both chimes. Walk. Walk? You sure? Have you ever forced yourself to do something that you don't want to do and you don't feel comfortable doing? Usually it's something that's quite challenging and can be overwhelming that may require a lot of skill or something you're not familiar with and you're a little bit paranoid or anxious about. That's normally what happens and what uh, those are normal things that cause you anxiety. But I find that the simplest little things are causing me anxiety. And it's been like that for years. I'm just kind of reiterating it right now for the point of 
people just joining these last couple of videos I've been making. But uh, one thing I've noticed is uh, the things that you used to enjoy, like those things, cause severe anxiety. For example, earlier today I went for that walk with my dog and there was absolutely nothing I found enjoyable or comforting about that walk. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's disappointing because walking out in nature is my go-to method of becoming mindful, becoming, uh, reducing my anxiety. So when the things that you enjoy and love and that you used to resort on for mindfulness to give you that mental break from all your anxiety, when that all of a sudden starts falling away and disappearing and crumbling before you, it's, uh, it is, uh, it makes it hard. It makes it more challenging, but uh, that's it. Life is full of challenges, right? Well, I'm going to have to break the cycle today. I know I've been cooking breakfast for the last few days in a row, but I just uh, don't have it in me today. As you can see from the time behind me, it's afternoon, so I got to come up with something else. And this is the best I can do today for my breakfast. It works. It's too wet and sloppy to go outside for a W today. Well, the dog is shedding, so I think I'm going to force myself to sweep the living room and the stairs. Yeah, I think the dog is definitely shedding. And no, all of that is not from the floor. Some of that is actually leaves from our poinsettia plant that I watered too much one day. And they all started drying out. Imagine that. Give too much water and they dry out and die. Now that the sweeping is done, I'm going to dictate a poem for my next YouTube video, I think. Casting chants, echoes of existence prowl below, reflections of life beyond. The clouds they drown such a frigid end, darkness awaits murderous pond. Ripples of time blur the sky, with a whip chance is cast. Rings below, clambering for shore, coughing up memories of the past. I got my poem out of the way, so that's good. And uh, now I'm gonna go out and medicate a little with some cannabis. That's my go-to when my anxiety is pretty high and I need to get a grip on that now. So I'm gonna go and enjoy a joint and then probably read or possibly meditate for a bit. One of those two things. Maybe I'll just sit back and relax and listen to music Damn, now I'm overwhelmed with decisions, and I hate making decisions. One thing I like to do is try to put things in perspective and uh, 
when I'm having a bad day and I hear sirens, I realize my day is not that bad. It's a lot of sirens on the go. Not that cold out anyway. Whichever of the three I decide to do, whether it's uh, meditating, listening to music, or reading, I need to get a refill of these first. Stephen King for the win. I was going to meditate, but the dog is chewing on his food out there, and that's pretty distracting right now. And I figured, hey, I can listen to music and try to read at the same time, because distractions don't really make that much of a difference in my reading uh, technique. Well, that was short-lived. I got through one page of the book and had to shut her down. It was useless. I was there for about a half an hour. And I might as well have been just staring out the window at the neighbor trying to clear some snow. As you can see, my wife and son aren't here, so the meals are a little, uh, a little scarce. So that's why I'm decided to try these noodles. I haven't uh, tried them before. You can taste the garlic, that's for sure. So in case you're wondering why my wife and son aren't around right now, that's actually one of the reasons that my anxiety is probably the way it is because my wife's father just passed away a few days ago and uh, my son and wife are up in New Brunswick right now so they can attend the funeral. My wife went up a few days beforehand to be with her father. So uh, that's on my mind. I never felt so lonely in my life as I do right now because I want nothing more than to be up with my wife and son and her family as they're going through their grieving process. I'd love to be there for their funeral, but it's just not going to happen. And one of the reasons is my ketamine treatments. Uh, I know you're not supposed to break the cycle, and I don't know if this is an extenuating circumstance. I My anxiety is too high to even address it or deal with it. I just I just go to the appointments and, and that's it. Yeah, it's uh, so it's hard right now. It's hard for many reasons, not just what I'm dealing with, but you throw a loss of a loved one on top of that. And it's, uh, there's probably no reason. There's probably explains a lot, explains why I'm as anxious as I am and can't function that well right now. And not only am I worked up and anxious over her being away and uh, and her father passing, just the appointments in general are getting to me. Um, appointments stress me out, and they probably stress everybody out, but I don't know, they seem to have a bigger impact on me, at least that's my perception of it. And that could be a bit of a selfish perception too, I don't know. But uh, the appointments are getting too much because not only like twice a week, that's two appointments a week. 
I have to jump in a cab and drive to and from in a cab to my appointment. Uh, so I have those two appointments each week, plus I got numerous other appointments, my psychologist appointment, my psychiatrist appointments. Um, like just this evening, I got an, a 90 minute appointment for dealing with mental health issues. So there's, there's no stop, there's no break. And I'm the type that when I have an appointment, it could be 5.30 in the evening like it is today. And because I have that appointment, psychologically, I just cannot commit myself to doing anything else that day because I have an appointment that evening. It's a weird thing that this does to me, but I feel physical sensations from it, like pain even. It's a, it's. There's no way I can explain it here on video, but just to give you an idea. I'll never get through this meal, these noodles, if I don't stop thinking about things to talk about. And just like that, I forgot what I was going to say. Gone. I'll pause this and I'll come right back. Now I remember, sleep. Sleep was the other issue I was going to talk about. Um, so far my sleep has sucked. But again, it's the anxiety. I know it. I mean, you had a depression too, but anxiety mostly with sleep. It's, uh, I fall asleep pretty easy, but staying asleep is the problem. And once I do wake up, boom, it's like every light in the neighborhood is on in my brain. And I'm wide awake and I'm pissed off and frustrated because I'm awake and then I can't get back to sleep. And can't sleep in in the mornings. I just, uh, yeah, the lack of sleep is taking a bit of a toll as well. Add that in this mix and yeah, you got Newfoundland weather. Well, I just finished a hour long appointment. I'm hurting now. I show you the good side of me. I always show you when I'm not at my worst. But I'm hurting right now. Okay. I really want this to work. It has to work. Only toast this morning for breakfast. Wasn't in the mood for that, but I had to force something in me, right? And just like that, the snow started. Well, I'm about 45 minutes from my cab being here. Didn't sleep well last night. Well, I slept better than I did the nights before, but I'm wondering if that's because I took a certain medication earlier. For some reason, there's one medication that when I take it about two or three hours later, I get really bad restless leg syndrome. And um, I noticed last night I took it a bit earlier in the night and I started getting restless before I went to bed. Uh, so maybe I'll try it again tonight just as an experiment. See what works. Still unable to shake all the anxiety though. And uh, I think that's gonna be uh, a lingering issue. <clears throat> it's weird because, <clears throat> sorry. It's like when I think about something, it causes anxiety. But I'm pretty sure the anxiety is there constant. So it doesn't matter what I think about, there's gonna be anxiety. Like right now, we got snow squall warnings, and I'm anxious over that. I got an appointment coming up in an hour. I'm anxious over that. And it's like everything I think about, I become anxious over. So I, I don't know if uh, it's all just me or if these things actually cause anxiety or if I'm just being irrational with what I feel anxious over. That probably didn't make sense at all because it didn't make sense to me either. Gone again, Rex. Sorry, buddy. I'll see you when I get back because my ride is out there.
Only for I can't drink 30 minutes before the appointment, I'd have a Tim Hortons coffee. My room. Way too many questionnaires. Every day, you gotta come, I gotta do this. As with the last time, I got my first two squirts in. Now I just gotta wait five minutes for my uh, second squirt in each nostril. Tick tacks. All right, got my second dose in. I'm gonna sit back and relax now. That last session wasn't too bad. I tried something different this time. I've noticed the first session I had, it hit me pretty hard. It was strong, like the effects of the ketamine. And it lasted what seemed like a, quite a bit longer. And uh, the last two times it seemed like uh, it was quick hitting me, but it went away just as fast. But today, it, uh, it was a little different. It didn't hit me hard, but the effects lasted what seemed like a little longer. And what I was doing differently was I had my headphones, instead of listening to music, I was listening to a meditation app called Calm. And I would use uh, their EMDR, EMDR, yeah, EMDR uh, tracks that they have on there. And I found listening to those, especially two or three of them in particular, was really beneficial during this treatment. It was like a full-blown meditative state, which was good. I'm off to bed for tonight, but before I do go to sleep, I just wanted to make a quick video talking about my evening. My evening actually has been one of my better evenings. Actually, it has been the best evening since I started my ketamine treatment. Um, yeah, my anxiety is up, but it, I can feel a little bit of a relief, and I don't know if what's causing it maybe it's because i got no appointments tomorrow for a change and that's why i'm not having this anticipatory anxiety which i usually get i don't know i hear the wind blowing and every time that blows it causes a spike in anxiety for some reason it does but other than that it's been a pretty good night and uh i'll take it i need that right now so anyway, I'm going to go dream about dumb money and uh, hang out with my dog. He's down at the foot of the bed there, snug up on my feet. Must give him some attention. Until my wife gets home anyway. Well, it's Friday morning and I actually had a decent sleep last night. It was good and I can feel the effects of that sleep on me today. I feel better than I have the last few days. Hopefully this is a good sign. I'm gonna say it is. Either way, I'm enjoying this little break from everything I've been dealing with the last little while, so I'll take it. Watching toast, toast, is like watching paint dry. One of the meditation practices I do is try to be more mindful with my eating. For example, I'm about to take a bite of this toast. And usually I'll take a bite and just chew it down and probably have my second mouthful coming in before the first one is even swallowed. 
but uh, one of the things I've been doing is taking my time. Like I'll take the mouthful, put my hands back on the table, and I savor every single flavor that I can possibly flavor in that mouthful of food. Like truly try to taste every bit of sweetness, every bit of saltiness, every bit of bitterness or whatever it might be. And just doing that helps, uh, helps ground you. And plus, you don't end up overeating as much either. And one of the other things that I do in addition to trying to savor each mouthful is, uh, this is new to me. These are new meditations that I've been doing or mindfulness practices. And again, I'll use the piece of bread as an example. When you take your piece of food, like it's on your fork or in your spoon or in your hand like toast, and just look at it and imagine how it got on your plate, where it came from, every single step of the way, what brought this piece of food to you. It sounds silly, but if you actually do it, it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite relaxing, actually. For example, I mean, I think, okay, I took it at, I just took it out of the toaster and put some butter on it. Before that, it was in the bag. And before that, it was in a grocery store. So I went to the grocery store to pick it up. But where did it come from then? Obviously, you had all your logistics involved. You got people, transport trucks driving the food where it got to go. Then you got the farmers who are making the bread, or not making the bread, but growing the wheat and the ingredients for it. And just keep going back and back and back until you can trace the origin of it. Yeah, it makes for a long meal, but it's uh, it's worth it if you're somebody who's got a mind that races all over the place because it helps bring your focus in and ground you into your meal. Right now it's Saturday afternoon. My morning hasn't been too bad. I had a decent sleep. It was broken, but still it was decent. Uh, don't feel well rested, but that's normal. I, uh, I gotta go out in public soon. I gotta go down to the grocery store and pick up some groceries. Running out of things. <laughs> I think I might use that curbside pickup. I like that. It's been a quiet morning though. Just me and my dog sitting here. I got to pause now to avoid copyright infringements, but we're just listening to the new Green Day album. Yay for curbside pickup. Love this service. All right, that's All right. for you. Thank you. Fun. You too. Well, today I decided to go to Middle Cove Beach to get out of the house. I need it out of the house. I need it out of my head. And uh, this is the perfect spot for it. Well, I'm out of here. Gotta go home, check on the dog, see how he's making out. Gets too stressed when I leave and thinking about it stresses me out. Well, after spending an hour there at Middle Cove Beach, I feel quite refreshed now, actually. It's nice, uh, I miss doing that. I haven't been able to get out, just my anxiety's been too bad to get out to the door to do these things and hoping now that I got it once that this will kickstart my momentum to keep doing it more and more because I need to do this more and more because not only does it ground me getting out in nature I mean I'm out there surrounded by as you've seen what I was surrounded by the ocean and the cliffs 
the waves crashing. It's it's amazing. So in, aside from that, it also uh, benefits me in the sense that now I have a bunch of videos I need to go home and edit. So that uh, that is also a um, another bonus from it. When you're sitting down comfortably eating supper and you don't want to get up to go get your own glasses, you got to put up with uh, your wife's reading glasses. joys of living in Cowan Heights. You can see rat tracks going across your backyard as they make their way from that wood pile to my shed. Well, it's now Sunday morning and I just wanted to give a little observation or report on my observations for the last couple of days. One thing that I've noticed is that today I'm feeling better than what I did say two days ago. But I'm nowhere near feeling as good as what I felt six months ago, if that makes sense. I gotta say, I blame the last three months on my medication changes. Even today, I'm starting a new medication. And it can be very frustrating and debilitating when you're going through it. I mean, the last time I went through it, I couldn't move my eyes back and forth and you'd hear or not hear, but you'd feel this weird sensation in your brain and sometimes it sends it throughout your body. And I was waking up being all disoriented, falling over my bedroom, falling in the bathroom. So med changes can definitely take a toll. In addition to the med changes, the months leading up to the med changes, I had a sick family member staying with us uh, for about seven months, uh, him and my daughter. So that was, uh, that was quite a stressful time. I mean, you're worried about the health and well-being of somebody, and at the same time, you're trying to deal with um, a totally different household. I mean, the dynamics, the dynamics of the household has changed, so that's stressful to adjust to. So today's question is, how much do I credit ketamine for my improvements the last few days? Because I'm not really sure. It's it's uh, it's definitely something to think about and examine and reflect on. One thing I know is that when I started the ketamine treatment, my anxiety was was way up, and that in itself I know will impact the effectiveness of the ketamine because I'm not in a position to do some of the tasks that were required or suggested to me. For example, I should be out walking every day, I should be writing every day, reading and doing things that are going to stimulate the, uh, the effectiveness of the ketamine. So in conjunction, I guess, not in addition to, because it's kind of still linked to anxiety, at the same time, my father-in-law was dying, my wife and my son are both away right now visiting her family, and she was with her father leading up to his passing. And being stuck home for whatever reason, it's, uh, it, it, it took a bit of a toll on me. It was hard. I mean, my family's up there dealing with grief and I'm here babysitting a dog and going through appointments. And uh, that's something that I got to deal with. On top of that, there's more trivial stressors that have impacted uh, this progress. Uh, I mean, I've day before my son left, we have two vehicles that needed repairs and uh, one involved having to get a tow truck, the whole works, and the other one is still in the garage, racking up a, quite the bill, I imagine. So just dealing with that and my psychologist appointments, the regular uh, ketamine treatments, which are twice a week, and when you take those, you're limited on what you can do afterwards. You're not allowed to drive that night, obviously, because you're under the influence of ketamine. So as you can see, I have a lot of other stressors that are 
incorporated into this snarl. And yeah, in addition to my normal, my normal everyday stressors that my hypervigilance tends to greet me with. For example, my neighbor's dog bark and drives me insane. And noises, crowds, bangs, doors closing, snow blowers, the whole works. It's all, it all just, it's overstimulating and drives me crazy. So this all leaves me wondering about things. It leaves me wondering if making it through my appointments, getting through my ketamine treatments, adapting to my wife and son being away, um, even, even the weather finally becoming nice out. It makes me wondering if all of those things are more effective at helping my depression and anxiety than the ketamine itself. But at the end of the day, I guess, my hope is that all of those things work together and that ketamine is just another piece of that puzzle. So we'll see, time will tell. I'm only halfway through my treatments and uh, at least I'm in a place now where I can function somewhat and uh, be a little bit more informative on my videos. So that's it. Please be the ketamine. What are you so excited for? Walk? Let's go. Just got back from a little walk and it's 2.30 in the afternoon and I haven't had breakfast yet and I'm starving. I think I need to eat.
I'm off to the airport and I had to pick up my son. Poor dog doesn't look too impressed. Just back from the airport. I'm happy now that my son is back. It's nice to have somebody else in the house again. Now it's bedtime. Time to do a little meditating before I fall asleep or as I fall asleep. I like to practice mindfulness. I can't even speak right now. I like to practice mindfulness sessions as I fall asleep at night. It's a uh, it helps uh, reduce the anxiety and helps ground me. So, hey, if it works, then why not, right? Well, I made it through my second week. So, uh, that's a good thing. Let's see how my third week goes. Anyway, thank you for, uh, for watching and supporting behind the scenes. Because this is... Uh, i never done this before. This is weird videotaping everything I do throughout the day. And uh, it's going to take getting used to, but uh, I think it's helping me actually because I'm focused on or distracted by my, my phone, my camera. And just making these videos is a positive distraction for me in itself. So uh, I'll keep doing them until I no longer find a use for them. So anyway, I'll see you in another week. So again, thanks for watching and take care of yourselves.